all online. Is Kia ora te mareno, may peace be widespread. Kia whakapapa paunamu te moana, may the sea be like green stone. He huarahi ma tātou i te rangi nei, a pathway for us all this day. Aroha atu, aroha mai, give love and receive love. Atu ia tātou katoa, let us show respect for each other. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Jackie. Bye-bye. Right, um, we would like to um, is there any conflicts of interest or um, people not uh, yes Adele yes uh, just one of uh, one of the well our, the Kodai district's AMP association is applying for some funding which has the um, printing.com quote in it. Oh, okay, no, then. I, I yep. Thank you. Is there any apologies? The only one I have is um, Felicity will be here, but she's going to be a wee bit later. So she is coming. So it's not really an apology as such. So um, so I'll move those. And um, do I have a second, please? Erin. Thank you. Do we have to have the... Through the chair, oh, with regard to these items of apologies and conflicts, no, we don't, not at this time. <coughs> okay, we so don't have to do any voting. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll go into public forum now, thank you. So is Manuera has he joined yet? Manuera has joined. Oh, lovely. So, okay, the floor, welcome to our meeting, Manuera, and thank you for attending. So the floor is yours now. Manuera, you currently have your microphone on mute. There you are. Okay, but you can see. Okay, well, well first of all, um, kia ora koutou whanau, Mark. Thank you for having me, uh, and I know you're busy. I just want to take, um, uh, really give you an update in regards to Tangonge Park. So uh, with the um, presence of COVID for the last two years, we're a wee bit behind our timeline. Uh, but I just want to let the board know that uh, there's a couple of things. We're, we're back on board doing, doing the main, and uh, I've now taken over the project from uh, the previous uh, two other kaimahi or three other kaimahi that were involved. So I just wanted to um, let the board know of what's happening. So I'm representing ANT. Um, as you can see, um, hopefully you can see around me, this is the, um, the domain that we have to work with. Uh, and I just wanted to, um, I guess, realign and, and let people know. And please, somebody let me know when I'm four minutes, 30 seconds, so I don't run over time. Um, so I just want to let everyone know that the reason why we're involved with Tangongi Park is to assist with the relief of poverty and hardship, especially in Kaitaia West, uh, to enhance well-being, uh, to uh, assist the building of strong whānau and positive communities, and uh, to help with the improvement of the park, uh, to identify community, uh, what the community further needs, and that's through our social uh, arm of OTC, uh, identify community, uh, oh sorry, and gain community support, and uh, promote the uh, hua whenua, uh, uh, hā kina of course, and um, yeah, and to be inclusive of all our, our peoples, no matter what nationality uh, they are. Um, so we've had a a uh, couple of hiccups and um, one of the things uh, that I and I should have read the uh, and I was the one that signed it back in the day and I think it was 2017 I hadn't realized that we we're also in charge of if you can see over in this part here we have to maintain the drains and this uh, uh, part of uh, land that's uh, 
that uh, goes in between uh, other people's properties on the other side of the fence. So it's a bit of a bit more of a um, a, a task. But I, really, at the end of the day, Fano, what I wanted to know is, is there a possibility? Because our, our current contract lasts until 2028. In order for us or for me to attract other funders outside of council, I'm going to have to give them a wee bit. I, I just feel that they are going to want to uh, know that there's the lease for what we want to achieve and what we want to do is going to be longer than uh, up to 2028. And that's at the end of the day, apart from introducing myself uh, to you all, that's really what I wanted to know is there, uh, what I would like is if we can get uh, uh, added uh, time added to the current lease that we have, which is only to 2028. That's really what I'm asking. I'm, we're not afraid of doing the work and getting things done uh, now that, uh, well, I'm here now, uh, but uh, what I want to know is would the Funnels District Council through our community board support me in requesting a longer period to give me an opportunity to uh, do and achieve the things that we need to? That's what I'm asking. Okay, thank you so much, Manawira. Is there any no questions? Worries. You're on mute, Jackie. Kia ora, kia ora Manuera. Kia ora Jackie. Kia ora. So, um, which Rōpū are you representing? Was it I'm with ANT, the Opodi Natika Trust. Uh, I, I had AUT and I was going, uh, that doesn't sound right. So, ANT, no. <laughs> oh, kapai. I, I'm kapai. not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> kapai. And, um, yeah, I mean, for me, it sounds like a one win for us. And um, it'll be about working through with... Um, I suppose putting it for, for firstly putting it in writing if it already hasn't you know if and and, and really spelling out what, what the plans are that will be the big one eh and um, yeah and we can see how we can go from there I'm certainly we'll have to have a proper talk about this but I'm um yeah well at the moment we're following the feasibility study which was done by Paul White in mm -hmm. 2019 so I'm trying to follow the the plan so to speak. I've had to reconsider making some changes because I don't think our our neighbours on one, like over this side where the fence is, I don't think they'd appreciate a basketball hoop uh, there when, whenever that comes. But mm -hmm. as you can see, um, our goal is to uh, develop this field for uh, junior development for all codes. And on the other side where you can see the bank, uh, we've invited our uh, Tangata Pacifica Fano, if they want to, you know, we've, uh, we're, we're leaving the door open for them to grow taro. Uh, but also in the far corner, all the way down there, is for a food forest to happen down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the plans there is for uh, there is uh, marakai, but I guess my feeling at the moment, and having a look at other marakais, maybe Jackie, your one at Ahipara is uh, is a wee bit different, but I, I sense there's a real challenge in trying to get people volunteers to be down here on a regular basis. So uh, there may be some slight changes, but I'll stick primarily to what the feasibility plan. At the moment, just to let you know, if you weren't aware, uh, back in then when uh, Paul did the feasibility study. Uh, the costings were around about eight hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars to do what we need to do, um, but um, I think we'll have a clearer picture on how we can achieve that uh, once we've mowed it again, uh, which is going to have to be done regularly now that the the rain's thing and everything is growing. Um, but yeah, we we want to support the the community. We want to support the community. We want to support. Farnworth District Council and uh, I'm happy to put, put some things together and uh, maybe list the reasons why we'd prefer a longer lease. Kapai, sounds awesome. Yeah, Thank you. Good. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, my details are with um, uh, not only with Adele but also uh, with our coordinator that's there. So I'm happy to field any calls whenever you wish. Sorry. Any other questions? Uh, Manawira, um, is there any collaboration with Healthy Homes regarding assisting with planting of food gardens? Uh, I, have got a, I have got a network with Healthy Families. Healthy Families, oh, okay. Healthy, 
who I used to work for about three or four years ago. So mm -hmm. I'm in communication with Healthy Families. They're now primarily based over in Kiowa, uh, but I, I will be working with Healthy Families, yeah, because those are the guys with the, that have done a lot of the research uh, and also with what uh, uh, I was able to do when I was with Tararua when we held the Healthy Families contracts. That's right. But yeah. we definitely will be collaborating. I'll, I'll collaborate with anybody that wants to. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm happy. So, so Manawira, if you could probably put all that in writing, please, yep. that would be great. Oh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Del. Thank you to the board. And copied, copied, copied into myself, please, and I'll forward it on to um, governance and the district facilities as well. Okay. And just to let you know, I've also included the iwi. Uh, and uh, with primarily Te Rarua, but Te Rarua want Ngāti Kahu and uh, Ngāi Takatoa involved in this project as well. So I'm, I'm happy to work with everyone. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you very much. Have is a good any, day. Is there any further questions for Manawera? No? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your time. Kia ora. Right, um, so now we have um, Julie Gordon. So welcome to our meeting, Julie. The floor is yours for five minutes. Oh, uh, good morning, everyone. You hear me okay? Yes. Oh, lovely. Okay, um, thanks for the opportunity to speak this morning. Um, I have a question and a request for the board regarding the pri prioritised footpath Pardon? Are you able to turn your camera on as well? Oh, right. Uh, Thank um, you. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read if that's okay, just easiest for me. Um, yes, well, I have a question regarding the prioritised... Oh, I don't suppose you can see me. Can you see me now? Oh, yeah, That's much better. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, about the footpath along waterfront... Road Pukanui and the amendment by Councillor Foy against this project. Um, it relates to the Tehiku Community Board meeting minutes for the 1st of June 2021, um, where a vote was held, and I think there was an amendment um, which was voted on, and the footpath project was taken off the list of priorities. Um, now, the public asked why was the waterfront road the footpath project listed as a priority and then dropped from the list of 10. Um, and all that uh, vote was at that June meeting, what a fifi. Um, since that meeting in June 2021, a lot has changed on the street and with the public. Therefore, we ask that the waterfront road footpath project be reinstated on the priority list and work started. Considering that the street is an 80 um, kilometre per hour zone, uh, it has significant number of new residents and new dwellings and an increased number of people working from home. There are more people looking for ways to exercise and the community, especially children here, need safe access to move about their community. Um, currently, the lack of footpath is not meeting the community needs, especially as the street is so narrow that cars have to slow right down to pass each other safely. With the trucks and trailers, cars and trailers, increasing number of electric vehicles and e-bikes using the street, there is a significant risk for pedestrians walking along the street. There is no alternative formed walkway as the deep drain crossings on the grass road reserve have fallen in. They were just a slab of milled wood. Um, they, were, they were rotten slabs, as you see. Um, I have attached a photo of a local lady and her baby's on the road, and I, I, this was part of an email. Um, Amy Rouse, I think I know, has five children and four of them she walked daily up to the Kahangareo or preschool um, morning and afternoon. And she didn't like it at all, of course, because there was no footpath. Um, now, referring to the Hohora ratepayers meeting 
which was on the 8th of this month, um, our board representative, Darren, was asked about it, and he said words to the effect that he didn't want people walking past his house at number 62, hence I believe he seconded Felicity Foy's amendment, which was effectively um, to, to drop our footpath from the prioritised list. Um, I understand the footpath was to go up to about number 62. Um, now, the footpath could have easily ended before 62. Um, and I asked Darren if he raised this, raised the waterfront road footpath deletion with the local ratepayers, and the answer was no. Just one moment. Some of us feel that there is a conflict of interest for Darren over this, as is I could see no virt virtually no public consultation on the matter or report from him to the ratepayers meeting. And seems he's clearly not keeping unbiased or neutral on the matter, which affects the neighbours and the public. Um, and I think the decision may, the vote may have been cl behind closed doors, conducted behind closed doors. Um, and I don't think it's a matter of personal agenda as it appears. Um, neither is it community minded or ben beneficial. We need our board rep to work with us effectively and we hope for that. We um, want to work with Darren um, much more effectively. Uh, I believe this has not been a representative or very democratic process for us. The footpath would be a wonderful asset and safety measure for the residents and the public, young or old. Given that our walk other walkway projects for our wider area appear to have been cancelled, reinstating the footpath should be a priority, please. One very op easy option for this narrow road would be to place the footpath out on the road reserve, far enough out to avoid the cost of creating driveway crossings, which there must be in the vicinity of 20 or 30 if it's on the other side of the road. Um, and avoid the need for future street, uh, avoiding areas needed for future street widening and keep the public away from residents' front yard as well, which does seem to be Darren's concern. And I understand that. Excuse me, Julie, um, you're now over five minutes. So is okay, I just ask you to please. Um, so is there any further questions for Julie for this one, please? I'll just say something, Adele. Say I, something, Adele. I have Madam Chair. Council, yes. um, Member Foy has her hand raised as well. Okay then, I would um, like um, Councillor Foy to speak first and then Darren. Hi, thanks for that. Um, sorry, I've just been on a site visit this morning and thanks um, Julie for your deputation. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware um, about the significant walking tracks and um, shared pass project for Hohora. Have you been made aware of that? Yes, uh, Darren mentioned it's all been cancelled. Oh, no, I think you must be misunderstood there. Um, I have secured $1.2 million for walking tracks um, for the Pukenui area, so I'm not sure if you've got your facts right with that one. Um, so. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that instead of 60 metres of footpath, you'll be getting significantly more than that. In fact, a whole um, route to link all of Pukenui. So, um, and that includes um, looking at the options along um, Waterfront Road as well. Um, so, we haven't actually got, um, I think a lot of the matters you've raised will be addressed by that. That would be absolutely fabulous, but we understood from what Darren said at the meeting that all the walkways had been um, cancelled. So that was why I wrote to, to the board, but wonderful. What sort of a time span, the money, please? The money starts in July. So from July, this July to next July, and we've already done one site visit, two site visits. We're working with the Wagner family about linking through to Hohori Heads. We just need to work out the exact route because um, the Wagner family decided to um, not go ahead with an easement that we thought was going to happen. So um, we'll just be looking at where that route can go to link the whole of Pukenui through to Hauwara Heads. That's absolutely wonderful news. Thank you, team. Um, 
Much appreciated. And Darren, um, we look forward to hearing progress on that. Thank you very much. I'll just add one thing to that, please. Um, I have actually just put an RFS in at the beginning of the week to have the speed limit in Waterfront Road changed from um, open road speed to 50. And um, if I gave you the wrong information at the ratepayers, it's only because that's what I understood was happening. I didn't think the Waterfront Road concrete path was going ahead. That was my last. OK. Oh, um, so um, thank sorry, you very much. Just to much. clarify, um, Julie, not concrete in, in stage one. It may not be concrete, so we haven't defined the formation of the path as yet. So we're just working through all those details. Oh, that's lovely. Um, any kind of um, gravel path. I mean, we travelled, we walked the part of the Te Araroa track out of Kiri Kiri, and that's just wonderful, and a lot of people using that. Wonderful news. Thank you. So any further questions for Julie? Thank you very much, Julie. Thank you, awesome work. Thank you very much um, to the board, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Right. Um, we now have, welcome to the uh, meeting, Mark. We now have you and you're welcome to speak for 10 minutes in, in your deputation. Thank you. Mark, at any point you want me to show your document on screen, just let me know. Oops, you're on mute, Mark. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, oh, kia ora. Oh, thank you very much, guys, for the opportunity. Look, I appreciate how busy you are, especially with the previous two deputations, so uh, I don't intend on taking 10 minutes of your time, um, but uh, we'll certainly cover off the things that um, I think are important in terms of uh, what we want to raise with you. So um, last time I think I gave you when you were at Tiahu uh, an update on, on Monganui and, and possibly the Sports Hub too, and uh, things have progressed, uh, particularly around or around both. Uh, but in terms of Monganui, we're making uh, good progress, and the uh, it's time or the time's appropriate to start looking at the next stage uh, of of that uh, development. So, uh, just for clarity, when the original consent uh, was submitted a couple of years ago, it was for a much larger area and a, and a number of other things in addition to what we're currently actually doing. So. Just to recap what we're doing now, we're extending the boardwalk from where it ends uh, just adjacent to Wilton's Motors there uh, around to Māori Point and uh, with a, a couple of viewing platforms, various access points to the uh, to the waterway uh, and of course a large jetty and pontoon which are imminently about to be installed. So uh, at the time with the funding that we had available, we uh, or the community felt that those were the you know the most key elements to get on with. Uh, so now um, the next uh, most important uh, in our view is uh, addressing the uh, very significant heavy traffic loads around the Manganui Wharf, and I know we've spoken about that before. For anyone that spends any time out there, you will you'll see the uh, the trucks uh, unloading and offloading fish. You'll see the tourist buses. Uh, and you'll see the large camper vans which have limited opportunity to park along Waterfront Road there. So as part of the overall consenting process, one of the elements was a overwater car park. Uh, if you know the area, it's just to the west of the entry to the wharf where the existing dinghy rack is. So that's consented. Uh, we didn't get underway as, with that as part of the stages. At point, we didn't have the funding. There is line of sight now to funding to to be able to do that and to make that area safer. And um, if that uh, little sheet has been sent out with uh, what's consented there, uh, you'll be able to see there's provision for seven long, and I think that's a key thing, long car parks which can take trucks, buses. Uh, and of course camper vans and again for for any of you that are aware the parking along there is uh, generally at right angles to the road and um, park camper vans 
uh, and trucks and any large vehicles stick so far out into it, it is quite a hazard, particularly with people walking around around there. So we think it's 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 a very important thing. Uh, what we're coming to you today uh, for is, is, since we developed that, um, there's a couple of minor modifications uh, we'd like to make to it, and that is to provide um, in an appropriate way, uh, replace the dinghy ramp that's there now, uh, and to provide a dinghy rack, uh, and potentially if funding allows, and that's the big question, uh, to possibly make it a little bit bigger than what it is there now. Uh, I think with the heavy use of that wharf in that area. Uh, I've been down there pretty much every day this week and there's, there's you know, up to seven or eight uh, commercial vehicles and large vehicles in that space that are all interacting with recreational and, and others. So all it is really at this stage is a heads up. Um, we'd love your support uh, if we do go to um, slightly extend uh, what's uh, already consented there. Uh, around that. Uh, we don't have any designs because obviously designs start to cost money. We don't want to spend money until we we know that uh, we have support. The next stage for us is going to detailed design. Uh, what you've got there is quite a high level conceptual with engineers estimates. We need to take it on to the next level and include those other elements. So at this stage, it's a heads up. That's what we'd like to do. Um, we'd love your support to do that. Uh, and if we could, um, you know, if, if there's any questions around it, any concerns, any issues, um, you know, we can we can move forward and come back to with you with something a lot more concrete in terms of what it might look like. Thank you, Mark. Is there any? Um, did you want to share with us the information that was sent to Malema or? Oh, sorry. Um, did I not? Yes, I, I, I sent it through. I, I missed the memo last night to get it out last night, so I flicked it through this morning. She may not have done that. So I um, sent it out to all the members. Oh, and I can share it on the screen if you wish. Oh, that that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Through through the chair, Adele. All oh, right, there it is. Right. Okay. It's very very little. Well, the, the vast majority of it is over the top of the existing ramp that's there. Okay, right. So, uh, and it's it's obviously above water, so it's, um, you know, it's not a reclamation, the, the, the horrid concept and word. Uh, and it's, that's effectively where the trucks park now, um, right back into that area, obviously not, not out over the edge, and around the entrance. And of course, the buses that frequent the business is more and more there now and the camper vans uh, along that area. Through through the chair, Madam Chair. Uh, Certainly, yeah. Mark, what sort of cost are you looking at there? And what, what area is it? Sorry, because I can't see on the screen. Um, oh, so just, it is, you know where the dinghy ramp is now at Monganui? Yep, yep. Basically over the top of that. Oh, okay. So it's right. raised up above, uh, it's on piles. Uh, the cost, our best engineer's estimate without getting into detail is in the order of $2 million. Okay, no, thank you. Cheryl, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, but I'm just seeing, uh, you know, um, for the future, something for Mill Bay. Um, can the board support in principle? If, well, I, I support in principle. So do I. So we need yeah, to so resolve that. Pardon? Do we need a resolution? We I could think we probably do. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. John had his hand up too. Yes, John. Yeah, um, I was just going to say, Mark, um, and I, I think Felicity will probably answer as well. Did anything come of um, the discussion with um, Daniel Thompson? And I know this is another section down the other end by uh, Walton's. Um, he, he had a concept of um, increasing the number of parking spaces down that way by, uh, by claim, um, I think, by shifting the um, the, the current footpaths out and yeah, if you know what I mean, over the other side of the road. 
Yes, so uh, in, ter in terms of that, I think Daniel is, is leading a charge. In fact, he's asked to have a conversation with me this morning, which I couldn't make, ar around that. So there's some traffic alignment opportunities through that area from particularly around in front of Wilton's uh, and the Thai and the waterfront, which, as you know, is, is quite a dynamic area there. So in terms of cr increasing additional car parks, I don't think it would create too many more. You're not talking another 10 or 20. But what we have done with the work that we've already completed now, we've created 30 to 40 new car parks already as part of the work down at um, Lions Park on the southern entry uh, that you'll have seen. So we just last week got the, the light posts up uh, for that. So there's a lot of car parks there. And of course, the boardwalk's almost down there now um, to, to connect that up. But in terms of, of Daniel and the community group's proposal, uh, that's a, that's another you know. And we're trying to trying to take this in, in small bite-sized chunks. Uh, I mean, that particular one's not an expensive one. In fact, it's probably a bit of line marking. Uh, it's, you know, you know, it's not a major, um, but it will have a, in my view, a, a good effect. But um, it'll be interesting to see how things flow, and I think they'll flow much better with the boardwalk in place. I mean, people are already using it. It's becoming a hell of a, a hell of an asset and a lot and a massive safety improvement. Um, just on that too, the lights have just turned up. Uh, there's lights going in under the handrail. It's going to be quite cool with that face down onto the boardwalk, so they don't have light pollution into the businesses or houses. So there's some pretty cool stuff that's going to start to to show up there in the next couple of weeks. But um, yeah, there there is that. But it, that's another chunk. I think he's I think he's working with Councillor Foy possibly others, um, to to develop a plan that works uh, for submission to council. Through the chair. No, excellent. Madam I can Mayor. definitely see the gain, um, the positive on what you, um, because of the trucks. Uh, just, you know, just watching them backed up in there, sometimes three deep, trying to get on the wharf. So, um, no, all good. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Thank you, John. So Cheryl, you were you had have your hand up. So Mark, at what stage do you want support from the board? <clears throat> well, I, I think in, it's an in principle, like you were talking about earlier, um, for uh, slightly expanding the scope subject to available funding. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, it's always a chicken and egg with something like this. You get a concept and an engineer throws some numbers at it. When you get into the detail. Those numbers can go, go up and down, and as we all know, construction at the moment is such a a wild place um, to be involved in. There can be all sorts of variability, so it depends on how you get your best bang for your buck. But what has come out of it is, we obviously definitely need to cater for the dinghies that are there now. Uh, that that plan that you saw before doesn't necessarily do that as effectively as it could. So we need to perhaps down the side have a have a dinghy rack. Uh, sorry, a dinghy ramp, uh, and also to more effectively, as, you, as you'll see them now, they're all sprawled out upside down and they take up quite a big space. The more effective and contemporary way to deal with those sort of situations is to have a rack system, like not unlike they have at Mill Bay, uh, for those of you and, and other areas uh, who are familiar with it, where you've basically got cubicles for your dinghies. And, so basically, uh, um, you know, that's sort of detail, isn't it? So yeah. can and we just, Madam Chair, resolve that the board supports in principle um, the development at at the Minori Wharf as put forward by Mark at this meeting? Absolutely. And then, then you can come back with all the finer points later. Sure. So I'm moving that. And I'll second that. So if we can have a resolution. Through the chair. Yes. Um, while we enable Mark to have his deputation time, I've crafted a resolution or a recommendation towards the end of our meeting. There's one there in our minutes that you can address both yourself and Cheryl. Thank you. Yes, we can do that later on. So I don't want to encroach on your time, Mark. Sorry, so we can sort that out later. No, thank you very much, folks. And um, Anyone reach out at any time if you want to walk through. Uh, I'm sure many of you have driven through there. It's starting to look really good. It'll look great by the time it's finished. And it's it's uh, become the, the Manu centre of Monganui um, already. Um, not that they should probably be doing that just yet, but they're certainly getting a fair bit of use out there, which is great. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, folks. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. So that's the end of our um, public forum and deputations. So we'll move on now to the confirmation of the previous minutes. There is just one thing I wanted to um, bring to your attention in those minutes. Um, when we were doing the um, car parks for Kaitaia, we were thinking along two car parks. So um, I'm sure that we did speak about that. Does, does there need to be something in those minutes around that? Outside, two car parks outside, Gecko Cafe, Riders and Muscle Rock, and one possibly outside Tano Country. Um, so do we need to adjust that or is it okay as it is? Through the chair, I'll make that adjustment. Okay. To the minutes. Thank you. We can always change it at a later date, but it was a as far as I'm aware, it was a removal of two car parks and one well, out. For the sake of clarity, is it two car parks out outside the front of Echo Cafe and two outside of Muscle Rock? Um. I would have to get clarification on that. So is Councillor Foy in the meeting? Uh, the Mike, or John? I, yep. Uh, I think it's one outside um, one outside the sports store, Riders Sports, and one outside Gecko. Yeah, so that makes it two. So it's two. Yeah. Um, two yeah. Total. yeah. And town and country, was it one or two? I, I never spoke with them. I don't know. Um, yeah. We'll just leave it at that point for the town and country, because um, it could be, it could be, may not be any, it might be one or two. So we'll just leave it at that for that one, but two car parks outside, or two car parks altogether um, on the outside gear car and riders. That's noted, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. So I'll move those minutes now that that is, adjustment is made. Do I have a seconder, please? Aaron. Thank you. So we'll have the voting up and I can't read the voting. <laughs> so I'll have to get you to call out the names, please, Marlema. No problem. Okay. Chair, Chair Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Member Foy? Aye. Madam Chair, that's carried. Thank you. So we come to the um, reports on 7.1 on page 19. So I shall move that. Do I have a seconder, please? No. Oh. Thank you, Bill. So we can um, do the voting after we've spoken, is that right? That's correct. Yeah, okay. So just please take um, my report as read. Is there any questions from my report? No? Okay, thank you. Um, I will share to you people, um, if I can find it amongst my saved items, a copy of the Tangonia Reserve um, plan, if I can find it. So um, I'm sure I still have it there somewhere. As you can see, I did meet with them before Christmas. Thank you. The Tahiku project is, is trucking along quite well and um, we had a meeting yesterday as well so we're working on different plans for um, the, the Kaitai 
Town Square and the Kaitoa Market Square at the moment, just just throwing some um, some ideas around and, and getting things sorted there. So um, we think we know what we're going to do. So at any rate, we can share that at a later date. So, but anyway, is there any further questions from for me? No? Okay, we'll go on to Darren, please. Um, you can take mine just as read, Adele. There, there wasn't a lot on my report this, uh, this right. time. Through the chair, apologies, through the chair, um, member Stuart had his hand raised, Adele. Oh, okay then, sorry. For, for my report, is it? Or Darren's? Yeah, sorry, I just wanted um, to understand the um, Tangodi Park situation. Um, uh, is that something to discuss now or is that later? Oh, we can so, discuss it now. Okay, that's fine, no problem. Um, in yep. the previous, sorry, in, in the previous term, um, the board gave the group a a lease of ten years. So they're about three or four years into the lease already, and with all the disruptions with COVID, etc. Um, so I can, if I can, as I say, if I can find a copy of the actual. Um, it won't be the lease, but it'll be the um, the plan that they submitted that goes with that lease. So um, if I can find that, um, I'll share it with you. Otherwise, um, I might have to ask governance to find it for me. Um, I'm sure they'll have a copy somewhere within council. And um, yeah, so as, as Manawira said, that they are going to go for funding um, and funders who wish, who are going to sort of give that sort of money to people to do that kind of development lead, need a, a longer lease. And I do understand that, and I'm sure you all do as well, yeah. um, if they're going to be funding these sorts of people. And they're very serious about it. So, um, yeah. So is there any other questions on that one, John? No, that's fine. I just wanted to understand the lease that, that it was. I don't think he mentioned it was ten years. That's cool. Um, and but I wouldn't mind seeing that plan if you can find it. Yes, yeah, if I can find it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Darren. I oh, just take my report as read. The Dell is not too much in there this time round. Okie doke. Thank you. Who's next? Oh, Cheryl. Um, can Darren give us an update on the drainage district, how how the um, cleaning and so on is getting along, please? Yes, I was going to, I've got something I do want to say about this. Um, Aaron rang me and I, I rang Troy Smith and I've got back a very unsatisfactory answer. Troy has said to me, oh, Aaron's drains haven't been done because of the high wind and the fire, but the high wind and the fire was in December and the drain should have been done in October, which is um, spring. And Aaron's drains are, are, are clogged. So I got back to Aaron and I've said that, what I've just told you people to, to Aaron, and I, I, there's something up with the drains, it's not being done and there's excuses flying left, right and centre. Um, that's that's all I can tell you, tell you, Cheryl. Thank you. Have there been any meetings scheduled? No. No, is that no, not that I'm aware of yet. So we're no further ahead, despite a deputation mm. from the drainage committees last year, in terms of the work being done efficiently. I gather. Our workshop's been cancelled, but that was mm. that was the only thing we had on the horizon. It's really hard in these times unless they are virtual at the moment, and it was going to be towards the end of February, and um, apparently, so as far as I'm aware, it was cancelled. But anyway. uh, through, through the chair, I do have it. There is a meeting scheduled for the drainage committees for the seventh of March. Uh, yes. You were correct in that. Um, 
they sh they were going to be virtual. I do understand that there are some of the um, committee members who are not fully vaccinated. Troy is currently working on a date. He suggested the 4th of April for the workshop with the chairs of those committees, yourself and Darren. That's the latest update I have as of this morning. Oh, I haven't got that information. So I'll send it through to you. Thank you. Felicity. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just on that workshop thing, um, why can't we just have it online? Like, I'm pretty sure that everyone's just really frustrated that nothing's been done. You can't, you know, turn winter off. Um, it's a construction season now. Uh, we mm. sort of need to get it sorted um, because you've got to do works when it's dry um, or else we'll be waiting until the end of the year. Um, so what did the staff say about having an online option of a workshop? Uh, my understanding from Troy on that matter was that some of the chairs have connectivity issues, but I, I don't have any further update. Well, that's not true because they can go to Tiahu if they have, you know, issues and um, go online. Can, I could, believe could it. get a response about that from... We can get a response, Troy, yes. As long as which, um, which individuals he's talking about, if that is the case. We can get a response for him. I'll send him a message now um, and also ask him to check on vaccination status. Okay, thank you. So essentially there's been no progress since um, last year. Am I right? So the council is letting the public down in that area, I believe. How can that be changed? Through the chair, I believe a direct conversation between yourself and um, between Chair Adele and I believe Troy would be uh, sufficient to get the ball rolling again. Okay, I shall give Troy a ring later on this afternoon. Um, can you please send me through his phone number, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Through the chair, um, every time I speak to Troy, I say, can you please give for example, Aaron Bradenbridge or Croydon Thompson a ring. And he goes, he says to me, yes, I will. And then I ring Aaron or Croydon back the following day and he's never made the phone call. And I think this is part of the problem. There's no follow up. They say they're going to do something and then they never do it. It's so frustrating. And this is time after time after time. Me. Thank you. Thank Madam you. Chair, I believe the chief executive's here. Perhaps he can comment. Is he still here? Yep. My comment would be oh. that uh, you shouldn't be dealing with Troy. That Adele should be dealing with Andy Finch on this. Um, with all due respect, you, it's great that you've got a relationship at, with the working level of council, but if there's dissatisfaction here, Adele, we need to hook you up with the general manager and make sure that you've got proper information on this. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so, okay, you just send me the information through and I'll see what um, I can do with Felicity. I think Felicity needs to. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr Clamp is the slightly taller and um, wearing a suit um, replacement of Andy Finch for two weeks, I think. And that will be a challenge because he's uh, he's he's holding the core business, but he won't be read in on uh, to Haku drainage. So let's discuss that offline. We need to get you the, the clearest and earliest information we can, but we've we've got our general manager away just for the next for the next week uh, two weeks. In fact, Glenn Raynham likewise. So it's unfortunate timing, but let's see how we can help you. OK, thank you. So if someone could just send me some information through as to how I can deal with this, please. Thank you. Madam Chair, the CEO's office will, will send you the details you need. OK, thank you so much. All right, Cheryl, would you like to continue on with your report, please? 
Yeah, I don't like being negative, but unfortunately, um, I'm just not getting responses to some of my queries. Um, and they're all listed here, basically, but the draft district plan, there was a lot of conversation about the heritage precinct that was proposed for Monganui and other places. There was a lot of public interest. What's happened, we don't know. Um, a beach signage is just, well, it isn't minor actually because there have been drownings, but the beach signage is consistent at the beaches, but it's not correct. For example, at Cooper's Beach and Taipa, they're saying there's deep shelving. Well, there isn't deep shelving. If we're going to be um, correct and, and let people know where it's safe and where it's not safe, there needs to be um, signage that reflects that. Um, the next one is Rangitoto Reserve. What do we know? What's the council doing about divestment for one thing and controlling the weeds, taking into consideration the historic values, um, you know, without damaging the terraces and the drainage, just, um, what are they, defence um, ditches, etc. And Rangi put a boat trailer parking. We had complaints from the public because the place is a nightmare in the summer. Um, the council put a block, it's on my report, it's sort of halfway between the sign and the road. Um, I was asked if the block could be moved back a bit so that it was parallel to the sign so that there was room to park a boat and a trailer, um, or a car and a boat trailer, um, and that was refused um, on health and safety grounds, which doesn't actually make sense to me. Um, in the meantime, having a look at Rangi Putta, there was a very good boat trailer study done, but one option wasn't considered, which is um, which the board's all aware of, and hopefully um, Bill's going to take that up. But how can I make the district plan? I want a response on that, response on signage, and a response on the Rangitoto Reserve. And there have been resolutions about the Rangitoto Reserve in particular. Um, so I don't know where they are, they're not on the action sheet. Um, also, the purchase of property at Taipa, hopefully we are aware of the fact that there is a public access down the middle of the two properties that have been sold or are being sold, and we will, you know, not be left behind when it comes in to, to um, a land swap or something, or making sure that the public has the whole public has access to that same area of land. Thank you. So Cheryl, there is a, um, a resolution in the um, discussion. Uh, are you happy with that resolution around front, Monganui waterfront? Page. Uh, it's on the discussion um, on the side. If you go into the discussion, that the Tehuku Community Board support, in principle, the expanded scope for the Monganui waterfront as presented to the board by Mark Osborne. Um, I think it really should read the Monganui Wharf. Yeah. Be right there. Yep. Uh, Monganui Wharf, I can change that through the chair. I, I just took the, um, the wording from the document that was shared on screen. It said Monganui oh. Waterfront. Oh, right. So, it was a design for the Monganui Wharf more so to expand that area, as far as I could see. Is that right? Yeah. Correct. I'll make that change. Okay. So, do you want to move that, Cheryl? I moved. Do I, I have to and I moved and seconded it earlier. Oh, did we? I could have done. Yes, we did too. Sorry. Through the chair. So yes. I've got I've got that resolution listed at the bottom of the minutes, as you'll see here. Yeah. So once we get through the general through the business of the meeting, we can address it in there. And I'll note that yourself and Cheryl had moved and seconded. Or would you okay. like to deal with this now? We're still in members' reports. Oh, we can do it at the end. That's fine. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Through so, the chair. Yes. If I could just speak to Cheryl. Cheryl, um, I'm, I've am i got a planned meeting with John Roy 
and I'm trying to get Hainawa on board in, in reference to those parking areas or potential parking areas we were talking about. Yep. So, so hopefully I can get some movement there and I'll get back to you, just so I understand uh, from their point of view what can be done and what can't be done. That's Good. at Rangi Porter. Awesome. So what about my other queries, Madam Chair? How do we progress getting some information on the status with the draft district plan proposed heritage precinct, beach signage, Rangitoto Reserve? That'll do. Can we put these um, items on the action sheet, please? So we can actually um, see where they are and what, and get some action on them, please. Through the chair, we can do that, and I'll work with the CE's office to see if we can get some resolutions for Cheryl. Oh, oh and the um, property at Thai Park, please, on page on the other page of my report, page twenty-four. Noted. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Are you happy with that, Cheryl? Yeah. Yes, I hope I will be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think any of the issues that come out of our reports need to go into the action sheet. To, We've been uh, asking for two years for that, so good. Okay, thank you so much. So is that you, any um, questions for Cheryl? No? Okay, Jackie, your turn. Oh, oh sorry. Mm -hmm. oh. Sorry, um, Madam Chair. Um, it wasn't a question, um, just for Cheryl on that district plan matter, um, because I've been in the workshops. So on the heritage staff, the staff, um, being Tammy Worst, I think it is, is writing the, what's called a Section 32 report for the Monganui area, and that will outline the, the different ways. But what happened in the workshop was that it was outlined to use um, non statutory methods and to look at the mapping. So none of those um, changes to be physically made until there's that direction from undertaking that assessment because they still need to have compliance with the RMA um, requirements in terms of plan making. So yeah, so until that report's written, you won't be able to get any updates. Sorry, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Foy. Okay, so we're on to Jackie, please. Thank you so much, Jackie. Okay, well, you, my report's there. You can take it as read. Um, the an update on Kuroda Park is that the new playground is uh, the old playground's gone, and the new playground is getting ready to be installed. And um, the big one there is the parking. This whole pump track, and the uh, we think with the new playground is just. It's it's gone through the roof. Andrea Panther has been around surveying the residents on the street and has come up with a pretty reasonable plan for some car parking there. And uh, hopefully it can be funded through the existing funds that are around for the park project. We're not sure yet. I'm not sure where that's coming from. But, um, at, but at least we're going to have a plan coming out of that for this for parking. It's quite dangerous at the moment with the number of pedestrians and 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 vehicles there so um that's a work in progress with with, uh, with her um the only other one I, I suppose it's not in my report but did we want to talk about the, the toilet thing at all in the in the space um madam chair the the, yeah, the, I see that that's progressing. Anyway, the um, sorting out the the issues around the public toilet in Kaitaia and um, replacing one of the images. Yeah, that's all, that's all under control. That's all under control. So yeah. other than that, um, no, that's my report. Oh, there was one thing. The recent storms has highlighted that we are going to have to start looking quite seriously at the waterfront along Ahipara. The surges right up over the road, uh, over into that area, and I think Council Floyd will probably have a better view of it than I did. But um, it, uh, yeah, these storm events seem to be becoming more and more frequent, and um, at some point, um, I believe that we need to be looking at a plan for the whole of the waterfront to be Rahi Para. Mm, so it's on my list to do. And if anyone has any ideas of how to help with that, I'd really appreciate appreciate it. 
Thank yeah. you, Jackie. Is there any questions on Jackie's? Thank you. So, John, your turn. Um, not a lot to report. I've got at the moment, I'm in the middle of um, helping Clive Patterson retire from the um, Far North Community Forest Trust. Um, <laughs> and um, just today, I've been down to find out how we sort out signatories and all that. I'll, I'll hold an AGM um, Clark, in, in a, probably in a few weeks when we um, find out exactly who um, the Forest Trust leases the um, prop lease the land from. Um, in 2011, I had a letter that, um, in Clive's documents that suggests it's the Far North District Council. So I've got um, the CE office looking into that for me for any documentation because um, I think the first thing we need to do uh, as a trust is find out who, if we can increase the lease from 2037. So there's been suggestion, if we can't, that we should harvest um, the fo community forest right now and then do a 15-year pulp harvest. So, um, but if we were to extend the lease, past 2037 we could um, leave the trees to mature further so um, I'm going to obviously be part of that trust from now on um, we'll wait for the AGM to find out who's doing what um, and yeah that's all for that I've got um, member Bainbridge keeping me in line there so I'm sure <laughs> it'll get done promptly <clears throat> And member Bainbridge is also the, the library trust board. Museum. <laughs> I mean, yeah, 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 so library's next probably, but anyway, um, thank you. And also, sorry, um, the RFSs I've put through recently um, since December have been very well um, looked after and the response was quick. So um, that's including replacing a, a uh, rubbish bin on Commerce Street after a footpath was concreted back in August. Um, trimming the magnolia trees for Commerce Street because they were um, hindering the CTTV. That, that RFS was done really quickly. Um, I wonder, we probably wanted it, we probably wanted them pruned a little bit more and I wonder if in, a, in our situation as members of the community board, whether when we request an RF, RFS in that situation, we can ask for the contractor to liaise with somebody on the KBA or, or myself prior to doing the job. Is that, I mean, uh, is, is that possible? We got, who have we got there that can answer that question? So, Malima, are you able to um, get some an answer back to John if you go to the CE office? Um, that, that's been noted and recorded as well, so we can continue to follow up on that, Member Stewart. Thank you. Uh, so through the chair, Jackie Brown. Follow is up a... at the moment. Okay. Hmm. Kia ora, um, Chair, Madam Chair. Um, John, just um, I, I often write that in my little note when I'm doing my RFS. Just say, please get in touch with me. Here's my phone number. And they quite often do. So, it's an easy way solution. Um, but the other thing is, is I, I too had a query about the new pump track in Kai Tire, and Water Fountain was one of them as well. So, I'm glad to see that you've got some, some progress on that. But also about the um, possibility of what's happening with the Plunkett rooms and a member for uh, Councillor Foy has um, come back to me with, with what's going on with that and the potential for a youth because there's so many youth congregating around that space would it not make a great little youth hub and um, so I'm going to start um, just making gentle inquiries in the community as to the possibility of that and maybe it's a possibility that the water fountain could be attached to the outside of the plunket rooms if it get, if you know, that's 
a possibility um, if they get used again. And apparently there's a little bit of work to be done on the buildings to bring them up to standard. But um, it just seems to be a, a could be a win-win situation here to have those those plunket rooms used again. Do you have any more to add to that, what's the team? Um, yeah, just that we've got heaps of old buildings that aren't maintained and, you know, like the old plunker building needs repiling. So um, lots of people want lots of different things, but sometimes um, it's hard to make it real. So, like, um, you know, repiling a house probably isn't as simple as it just sounds saying the words. Um, and... Yeah, I think um, I'll get back to the board with whatever the asset management and et cetera come forward with renewals budgets. But I think looking at that whole space instead of just, you know, individual buildings because the old pools, you know, we need some direction on that because it's clear the sports hub is going to, you know, be open hopefully later this year with the pools. And um, what does that mean for our old pools, you know? So um, I think we need to start forward planning instead of just sort of getting to that point and then um, not having a way forward. Great idea. Thank you. Is there any questions for Member Brown's report? Just um, yeah. through the chair. Um, Jackie, any any visible problems resulting is a because of the pump track? Is there anything happening um, that you're not able to control or anything like that? Just at this early stage, I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. what I'm hearing from the community is that it's um, it's more designed for the older the older child. There's been a few grazes and bumps and bruises, and <laughs> I don't know about broken bones, but. Um, I haven't heard of anything particularly um, nasty oh, going on there. Yeah, um, and there's been the odd, the odd, odd thing happen. You know, as happens when you get young people congregating. But yeah, right. um, I just hear that they're being really well used, and it's getting people outside, and which is great. And um, the only request I've had is that could there be a pump track just for the littlies? <laughs> Maybe something <laughs> around the outside, a little more gentle than right. uh, dropping in style. And I said, well, who knows? But um, at this stage, no, because we've, okay. you know, we've pretty much done our dash with it. But um, perhaps it's when we do consider putting in things like footpaths that we make them a, maybe a little bit, if we've got a footpath through something, that we make it so that it's got a bit of an undulation so that our <laughs> littlies can um, make use of those instead Practice. of some tracks. Yeah. So um, just about designing things for everybody. It's, it's right. Yeah. Can't please everybody, but no, uh, that's true. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Could I ask Jackie a question, please? Yes, certainly. Um, I've just got a member of the public up here wanted to know how to go about getting a pump track in Pukanui, and I just wondered <laughs> how you kick your one off. <laughs> Get in line. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, well, basically, that money came from the. Was it with PGF? Was it? Um, for the city, shop, wherever it came. Yeah, um, shop ready. Shop ready money, and um, we were just very lucky that we we already had plans to have one in Aipara, and it just made it go a hell of a lot faster than we ever thought was going to be possible. Really, it's about having a reserve plan for a, an area, getting a plan happening, and then getting it submitted through. That's all we can suggest, and making sure that the community is on board and supportive of it, and then looking for funding. You know. We've got a we've got an area, we've got a community in support. Yeah. So we just really need to stage how do we start stage one is the question. Any ideas, Felicity? I think it's uh, what about the town planning that we're doing for that? Are we not doing plans for reserves up that way? It's really about getting a plan and then um looking for where we can get the funding from. I mean, some of it could come from council or community board, but some of it can come from the public sp space. There is a lot of money out there for this type of, of um, project. And so, um, yeah, it's about getting that plan first and uh, getting it costed and then getting it, you know, put forward in the annual plan. If council's going to fund it, that is. Okay, yeah. thanks, Jackie. 
Okay. Thank you. Are any further questions or? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. It was just um, about the Hipara Aroha group. I think that they've applied to, I think, Sport Northland or something like that for um, what's happened at Ahipara for the park. Um, so basically there were no spatial plans until it was done in the master plan for Ahipara and, and, <laughs> um, and Jackie, some of her members of the Ahipara Aroha group had told me about the Raglan pump track and so that's why we knew to include that in the design, you know, include that in the spatial plans, but um, that's why our board is um, forward planning with our placemaking budget, Darren. So um, my understanding is that Chikol, Pukanui, and then Doubtless Bay, so Kari Kari, Taipa, Cooper's Beach, Cable Bay, Manganui, Hihi, is all been done under this um place making spatial planning uh, for forward planning our spaces but when we also do like a plan spatially plan a, a one of the spaces in the areas we look at the titles so we look at the physical um legal titles turning my volume up and we um look at coastal hazards and reserves and developing to the perimeter baseline and which things need consent and staging it and and looking at doing all the scoping and consenting um, in advance of actual delivery, so it's real. So um, our governance staff who are here on this call, um, I don't know if they've been talking to Cheryl, et cetera, um, about not only our project delivery, but our forward planning and ensuring that whatever people are thinking of doing is deliverable. Uh, and staged and realistic um, because each of those spatial planning we're doing also has a planning assessment so it's clear what things need consents or not and what things can be delivered straight away and also it's prioritised in terms of what the public want. So we're doing not only the scoping, the delivery, the, the consenting in advance, but also doing the consultation with both the community and iwi. So um, that'll keep us busy. Yes, it certainly will. Thank you so much, Felicity. Um, right, as um, through the chair, Darren X has his hand raised. Oh, okay. Sorry, Darren. Darren, you're on mute. It's not meant to be. I'm, I took it off. Okay. We can hear you now. Okay, my hand's not raised. If it is, it's not meant to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, shall we have the voting up, please, for um, the reports, please? One moment, please. All right. Uh, Chairperson Gardner. Oh, did we get bills? Sorry. We oh, have oh, Bill Sibridsky. Apologies. Sorry, Bill. I just realised now. <laughs> so, we'll. we'll um, Sorry, I wasn't concentrating we'll either. These. Oh, beg your pardon. Sorry, Member <laughs> Can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. R real simple. Um, I want development planning, etc. That's a, again in the process, being handled by Susie. All of the committees, um, i.e., Aoni, Farapipi, Lake Oia, um, Rangiputa, they're all working together now, and all their committees are back in in, in, um, in meetings, meeting with them. Very excited about this about the proposed spatial planning at the Whatapiti, Whatapipi Peninsula in Rangiputa, but I'll cover that later on. Um, can someone just enlighten me? It's not in my um, report, but is there a drag line working in Kaitaia somewhere? And why I ask is it's the, the machine we need to clear the basin in Awanui, the river loop. Does no one knows? Okay. Say that again, is there a what in Kaitai? A drag line or, or, oh, or some line. other type of machinery. Someone said it was working down by the um, sewerage plants. 
I just is it something it that good. goes in the river? Is a drag line something that goes in the river, Bill? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's got a bigger bigger reach than your normal digger. Last time the basin and I only was oh. by the dig with the digger. Oh, that'll be KCL. That'll be Kara Civil Construction doing the okay. river work. So ask Peter Wiesing. Peter. Thank mm -hmm. you, Felicity. And just um, carrying on, um, we the day I walked into council, we you were talking or we were talking about halls. Can I have an update on what our decisions are, what our aims are, our goals are for the halls, i.e. Aoni Community Centre, Lake Koea, et cetera, um, just so that uh, I am looking at you, Felicity. <laughs> Just so that we can um, you know, sort that issue out, it's no use my group's planning and then all of a sudden things change due to um, our direction in terms of ownership of the hall and use of the halls. Um, I note that most of your, uh, you are re reporting that you're getting good returns on the RFSs. I must admit at the close of last year there were still, still some outstanding issues. I'd like to follow those up but um, I'll report back on those in my next meeting. Um, and another thank you to Adele too for organizing or arranging with staff for the induction that we had in early Jan late January. That was brilliant. Um, look, looking forward to some of the issues that come up, basically induction and what um, staff or the council can do to improve induction of new staff. And um, that's me in a nutshell. And once again, thank you all for the first year. Brilliant. Any questions on Bill's report? Yes, Jackie. Yeah, just regarding the halls, Bill, I just think we need to maybe have a little workshop. Yep. Just to thank you. To lay it all out on the table and have a good look at, at, at what we're dealing with here. That'd be um, great. Yeah, you've into that, Felicity, everyone? Yes. Yeah, can, can that be set up at some point? Yeah, room? can we set it up virtually? Because I think it's um, we're not going to get to meet face to face over the next probably six weeks to two months. So if we can actually um, do it virtual, that'll be great. Please, I'll set. I'll try and set that one up. Well, you don't need Thank a motion for that or anything. No. Just Pardon? Me. You don't need a motion from me for that. No, no, no we can just okay. do a workshop. Okay. We need to have a workshop anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. It was just an update for Bill about Fatafifi and Doubtless Bay, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure if the Board of Structure Committee meeting that we had last week, I think it was, uh, with the cycle trails, and there was um, a lot of debate about uh, including Tehiku in the forward planning for cycle trails um, for the great ride and Adrian in particular um, has highlighted that she'd like to include new designations for the trail across the whole district. So um, well done to the board for uh, looking at those in advance so that our landscape architect can have some of those routes to plan and show um, Adrian that are located within public road, legal road, um, so that um, that's all able to be slid across the table to be included in the district plan um, as part of um, potential works that Barker's, which is a planning firm, um, can potentially do as part of the district plan plan change process. So in short, put in a statutory document, then it can become real um, in, in four years to come. So well done to the board with your forward planning work. Thank you. So you would have all got the email that I sent out this morning, um, or I kept you in the loop from Adrian Tari, so um, so you can see what we're all talking about around the Tahiku cycleways and footpaths, etc. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll have the voting up now. <laughs> Sorry, Marlema. <laughs> The voting is on your screen, Chair Gardner. Aye. Member Brown? Aye. Member Axe? Aye. Member Bainbridge? Aye. Member Stewart? Aye. Member Sabritsky? Aye. 
Member Foy. Aye. Madam Chair, that is carried. Thank you. Right, we're on to the funding application, which is only one today. That's on 7.2 on page 29 from the Kaitai Districts and AMC Association. So I believe they're not having the show, but they're doing the horse um, show part, like for the horses. That's my understanding. So. So would you like to discuss this before we, um, or do we have a mover? Um, Madam Chair, I, I believe that this application just really applies to the show day, because indoor outdoor booklets and um, that's not going to be, I'm not sure what we're funding, what would be considered to be funding here. And I, I don't think that there, you know, um, yeah, it's uh, certainly not, you know, the few ribbons that will be for horses. Um, and it's not going to be two thousand dollars worth. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just sort of wonder whether or not, um, did did anybody talk to them at all? No. No. No one. I didn't even talk well, to them. Just a basic conversation with yeah. Travers. Um. Just quickly. And yeah. she said it was just going to be for the ribbons for the horses, which I can see it as part of the application for the funding. So perhaps if we just went with that amount, but I don't know how everyone else feels. Um, Through the chair, we do have Kim Hammond on the call, if you have any questions for her. Okay, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Are you able to elaborate further? Yeah, sure. So through the chair, the ribbons for the horses is going to cost $1,190. So if you were to just specifically fund the ribbons, then that's the amount and the coach that they have provided. The remainder of the request has been put in for administration. So $1,300. Um, <laughs> sorry. I'll, I'll... That seems exorbitant. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so would you like to make an amendment? Because I'm quite happy to just um, fund the ribbons for the horses. Oh. Um, Madam Chair, I just had a question about the number of horses. Like, how many horses are there to get? Fourteen hundred dollars of ribbons, like because we don't like horses aren't people, like you know, going to the event. I guess as a community board, what I'm wondering is what's the community interest in this? How many, how much community stuff are we getting for our fourteen hundred dollars of horse ribbons? So through the chair, in terms of the horse ribbons from the quote, I can see. They're looking at 425 for first to third prize ribbons and then 65 champion reserve ribbons um, and then $20 in postage. So whether or not, I, I don't think that they would need for, or let's say 500 ribbons for this round um, and that those ribbons are going to be split over very many more uh, AMP shows. Um, sorry, to, to, to the chair, um, look, I've been keeping an eye on on this uh, through Facebook, and just alone in the Broadwood show, they're struggling to get any entries at all, in in this time. And I'm just thinking, I, I, I'm certainly, I mean, we can put it to the vote, but I, I will be voting against this. This doesn't seem to be right for me. It's 400, I can't imagine there being 425. Yeah, I just think, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll be happy to fund the AMP show and it's going to benefit for a whole pile of people, but for a few horses, I think that maybe their entry fees need to cover the cost of that because I just don't think that this is um, for the whole pub, for the, yeah, this is me personally. 
Um, I just I want to indicate that now that I will be voting against this motion. Just just I don't think that this is uh, yeah a wise use of our of our funding. Is there anyone else who would like to talk to this, please? Member Stewart has his hand raised. OK, um, Member Stewart. Yeah, I'm not I'm not um, voting on this because of a conflict, of, but the ribbons yeah. aren't part of my quote. Um, I can definitely tell that they're um, buying the ribbons for future use. Um, so, you know, there could be there could be five years worth of ribbons there. Um, so um basically we need to think do we want them to have the cost um the cost for the horses over the years um but one question i asked kim i've got a funny feeling how often are we um how often are we funding the amp show i i'm pretty sure even in our turn there may have been a couple i could be wrong but um has it been have they been getting money often from the community board? Uh, through the chair, I'm not too sure how often they have applied to the community board. From my recollection, yeah, we usually do get an application from them year after year after year for the AMP show, and it's been for different costs. Um, this is the first time that I ever remember them applying for the ribbons for the horses. Well, I myself personally don't think that this horse show is probably going to go ahead with the current um, environment that we're in. So, um, for me, if that was not going to happen, I well, I would put it in the motion if we did fund them anything, that providing that the actual horse show did go ahead. So I would cut it down to say, I don't know, what is the uh, an appropriate cost for ribbons for this particular show, if it was to be held, say $300 or something like that, um, if the horse show went ahead. And that would be part of the motion, three, three. if it would go that way. Through Maybe. the chair, um, yeah, through the chair. Uh, one thing I'd I'd like to mention, if you um, you go back to that ribbons, just having, um, I understand the process of printing on that type of product, and I would suggest if they were to buy one year's worth, it would be just about the same amount as buying four or five years worth. Just something for the, um, um, I can, I know it looks extravagant but um i know you know to buy 10 or 15 ribbons will be the same cost as buying 100 or 200 ribbons with the setup fees and everything um it's not something i produce and it, uh, it's just something i know how i, I know what it, what they cost to produce okay thank you is there any other discussion on this one Okay, well. well, sorry, do we have a number? Is there an amendment? Uh, through the chair, Kim put in the chat um, the amount for the ribbon cost, I believe, which is $1,190.19 for the printing. Okay. Adele you, or Jackie, are you going to move an amendment or John or someone? Through the chair, Member Stewart declared a, a conflict and um, therefore will not be voting on this matter. So would an appropriate amount of $500 be enough to cover the ribbons for the horses, in your opinion, John, for the printing? Uh, no, it wouldn't, but it, it, it covers some of their costs. Um, I think the board just got to decide whether they want to I don't think that we I don't think we need to look at the ribbons directly. The board just has to decide whether they want to support the AMP um, show yeah. and, the, and and what it's going to cost them to run. Um, of course, if 
the event didn't go ahead. Um, unfortunately, I, I run events and you can't print the ribbons in five minutes. So they, they've got to prepare that the event will run ahead. Um, but I'm sure if we funded something else or, or gave them money towards it and it didn't run, it, run they just have to return the money. Absolutely. Yeah, and through the chair, Madam Chair, um, with the ribbons and the production of the ribbons, it would have a date on it. So I can't see this that this cost being for future items. Surely it would be 2022 best best horse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, if you know what I mean. So this must be for for the one show. No. Bill, Bill, I would suggest it's just got the Northland A and P show on it. Yep, that's okay. personalised. Just a generic. And then it'll have first. It won't. It won't have date. Okay. Thank you. So, should we do an amendment for five hundred dollars, maybe, perhaps, so, if the so, if the show goes ahead? So, through the chair, we don't yet have a mover and a seconder for this item. So. We move and second it so that it is on the table for discussion and then we'll oh, work on so the amendment. Okay, so we have a mover. Who, who would like to move it, please? I'll move, I'll move it down. Thank you. I'll second it. I'll Thank second you. it. Darren. So we've discussed a lot of it. So um, I'll move an amendment for $500 and just see where we go with that. At, and, and in the amendment, would I would like to have something around the um of whether the show goes ahead or not if, if the the not the show but the actual horse show goes ahead so seeking clarity madam chair on whether or not the 500 is to support the yes. uh, printing of the outdoor booklets and purchase of the ribbons as well so the outdoor booklets would have been for the whole show to support the 2022 a and p show yes could we could we just make it general and just say for cost yeah 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 and in the event i mean should the should the show go ahead Is it sufficient? Yes, it should be okay. Yeah. Okay. So if the show's cancelled, well, it just come. It just stays in our account. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So do I have a seconder for that? We have been moved and seconded by Darren and yeah, uh, but Member Zabrinsky. Yeah, that was the first amendment, but this is the amendment. Sorry, I adjusted the amount there because we had just moved and seconded. Sorry, with the agreement of uh, the mover and the seconder, but I can change this to an amendment. Okay. Is that what you do? I don't know. Sorry, yes, that, so, but I can change it to an amendment so we can make that official. Okay. One moment, please. So this amount. Motion amendment. Oops. Okay. So for the so we had member X and member Sibritsky move the motion. Um, and now we need a mover and a seconder for the amendment. So I'll move the amendment. Do I have a seconder, please? Darren. Darren, thank you. So is there any discussion on the um, amendment? No. So we will have the voting up, please.
Chair Gardner? Aye. Member Brown? No. Against. Member Bainbridge? Aye. Oh, sorry, Member X? Aye. Member Bainbridge? Aye. Members, oops. Member Savritsky? Aye. Uh, Member Foy? Aye. Madam Chair, that's carried. Thank you. Right, we're on to the um, 7.3 project funding reports and we've got the funding report through from the Northern Area Floral Arts Society that was very lucky to get that event in mm. in this environment so that was really good. We're here to support these events so and so pleased that this went ahead for our community. So um, do I have a mover and a seconder, please? I'll move it. Seconder. Second. Thank Hello. you. Is there any discussion on this one? No. OK, we'll have the voting up, please. On your screen now, Chair Gardner? Aye. Member Brown? Aye. Member X? Aye. Member Bainbridge? Aye. Member Stewart? Aye. Member Sabritsky? Aye. And Member Foy? Aye. Madam Chair, that is carried. Thank you. We are now on to 7.4, which is the Tohoku Statement of Community Board Fund Account. So I'll move that. Digging it. Okay. Is there any discussion on this one? The community board account. One yes. Account. Yeah, there's a lot of money unspent mm. um, from B3 Inc, Born to Run, Racing, um, to Poker Power. Dipoka Puchiaki. Uh, so those three, I would like it if somebody would ask whether that money is still needed, give them so much to uplift that if they do still need it, give them a certain amount of time and then return it for the fund if not. Now the, the escape design for Unohi Wharf, that's already been paid as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I'm just I'm talking about the next three yeah. now. Yeah, and B3, because the 2021 festival didn't go ahead, so that obviously... Well, 2022, so they might as well give the money back. Did they, did they get the money or did they... Is it still sitting in our account? It looks like it's still sitting there. They haven't uplifted it. Okay, so what we need to do is return it to the, the account and if they wish to apply for funding next time, the... Um, Monganui Festival is held, which won't be this year. <coughs> they need to put in a new application, I believe. Same with Born to Run. Did they have that event? Did they uplift the funds? If not, can we just return it to the... You know, we need to ask all these people whether they want this money and if they don't return it to the funds because it's just sitting there doing nothing. So... Escape Design, Be Free, Born to Run, and the um, Te Poka Pū, I presume that's the Eco Centre, for $5,000. What happens to the Escape Design? Is that, is that um, yeah, that, that, going? As far as I'm aware, that's already been paid. She's, yeah. uh, so, I'm not concerned about that one because that's one of the ones that, you know, for the general public, but there are three individual yes. um, people who have actually applied for funding and we don't know whether they want it or not, whether they've had it or not. You know, it just can't go on sitting there month after month, in my opinion. That's right. So can someone please deal with um, those issues? Can I ask... Um, through the, through the chair. Uh, yeah. 
Kim has left the meeting at this stage, but what I'll do is I'll touch base with the funding advisors in her team and see if they can make contact with those um, funders you've list listed to get an update. And if it hasn't been used or uplifted and is not going to be, then the fund needs to be returned to the pool. Is that correct? That's the story. Thank you. You're, okay, we'll do that. So, but further down, it says that B3 is, is, is not uplifted, but then it doesn't say that um, Born to Run is um, no. uplifted either. So it, it's really confusing. Well, the funding people can look into that. We don't need to. What we just need to know is if it's not being used or being uplifted, can we put it back in the pool for redistribution? I have noted that in the resolution recommendation, Madam Chair. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this particular report? Okay, we'll have the voting up, please. On oh, this. Yes, so Madam Chair. Yes. Like that we seem to have quite a lot of funding in there. Um, and maybe it's um, given the fact that we're now in February and should we be spending this by the end of the year, uh, by the end of our financial year? And so I'm just wondering if there's, um, do, do we need to, to put something out into the wider universe and let people know that this funding is available? Just that normally our funding has gone to events and things like that, but it hasn't gone that way yet. And, yeah. um, and, you know, hasn't gone that way for, for whatever reason. And perhaps there are some smaller community oh. projects that might be on the boil that might, might benefit from this, that may not have considered the community board in the past because... I'd rather see it go to infrastructure myself, but that's just an opinion. Yes, please put it out to your wider community. You know, there might be a group that wants um, <laughs> their kitchen doing up or something in their kitchen or... Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as part of their, like, a, a club or something like that. If we can help in any way, with, with no being no events going, we need to spend it some other way. So if you can put it out to the wider community, mm -hmm. we can help. That would be fantastic because it's a plus plus for us. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll have the voting up for this one. Please. On your screen now, Chair Gardner. Yeah, I. Member Brown. Member Brown. Ah. Oh. Uh, Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. And Member Foy. Aye. Madam Chair, that's carried. Thank you. So we're on to 8.1, which is the information report. So do I have a mover and seconder for that, please? No. Thank Darren, you. Darren. Thank you. Any discussion on this one? Is there something you don't um, would like to talk about? No. Okay. We'll have the voting up, please. On your screen now, uh, uh, Chair Gardner. Aye. Member Brown? Aye. Member X? Aye. Member Bainbridge? Aye. Member Stewart? Aye. Member Sabritsky? Aye. And Member Aye. <coughs> also carried, Madam Chair. Thank you. We're now on 8.2, which is on page 51. So the Community and Customer Services Activity Six Monthly Reports. I'll move that. Do I have a seconder, please? Aye. 
We've got two at that moment. Ah. Choose one. Jackie, Member Brown. Thank you. No, any discussion on this one? Up and down, isn't it? Mm. The impact of COVID. Oh, Any further discussions? No, okay. We'll have the voting up, please. Chepis um, and Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. Member Foy. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Right, we have the um, the action sheet. Action sheet is. So, who would like to move the action sheet, please? Jeffy. Thank you. Bill, well, second. Thank you. So, we're just going through the action sheet. It's, we've got a new lady to deal with, Dawn Spence, who's replaced Sandy Morris for the footpaths. So that's lovely. Oh, and also Elizabeth Stacey, who okay. provided that update that I sent out to all members. Thank you. Um, could I please ask who is Kirsten Griffith, who was mentioned in that update, Marlena? Uh, Kirsten Griffith. Griffith works with our strategy and policy team and she is wanting to provide the board with a one hour workshop yeah. on the road naming policy. Thank you. And that'll be next time. That's Which correct. The end, March. So at the end of the March meeting, we will have a workshop. <laughs> is there no way that we can have a meeting, a physical meeting, and if the staff don't feel comfortable, they can just come in by teams? In Te Ahu? Yep, there is a way. Uh, th through the chair, that'll be a discussion between the chair and the CE's office. Oh, we'll have a new one by then. Because I don't, I don't find these virtual, they're paying me ass, actually. They're very hard, I know. I, I completely understand. I really do. Oh. There is no law stopping us getting together as a group if the staff want to Skype it and video well, it. Well, they're doing it here, so why can't they do it through Tiahu if we're all present in Tiahu? That's, that's my question, eh? Mm. True that. Yes. So we're going through the action sheet. So the actual um, footpaths are, we have a list of the footpaths. We can do a, a little bit more for our money, I think now, can't we? Because, um, am I right? We can. Mm -hmm. So, Kilda, yes, um, Madam Chair, I just noticed on the right hand side there in the notes there was a request for Elizabeth Stacey NTA to attend the meeting and speak to this action item regarding the footpaths. Is that is, right? Well, is, uh, is, through the chair, based on the email that I sent out yesterday, Elizabeth gave her apologies. She was unable to attend, so that's why she provided the written update. Yeah. I don't know why I haven't got to use for those emails yet. I'm happy to <laughs> share it on screen if you need it. No, no, can't buy it. That's all right. Uh, will we be seeing her at the next board meeting? We will certainly extend the invitation to that team. 
That would be good. It would be good to know where we're up to with all of these. Thank you. Now, for Asia has put a um, a note on the in the in the chat here. Tiora, we need to do a, and conduct a risk assessment to conduct a physical yeah. meeting on council premises. We can have that conversation offline with the chairperson taking the board's preference for a face-to-face -face meeting on board. So we can we can do that, but at this point, um, yeah. we won't be on council premises. We'll be in Tiahu's premises. Okay. Uh, so, through, Madam Chair, I suppose it's about just finding out what Tiahu's policy is on renting their rooms at the moment. Yes, and and also it's about well perhaps um the staff are able to um, come in online probably in the conference room and um yeah so we can we can probably hopefully for March the March meeting we can do something like that although the March meeting was supposed to be out at Monganui um we might just have to change that and just see how we go over the next few weeks. How does that sound? Yep. Through the chair, Member Bainbridge has a hand raised. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, can I ask, we've done a lot of resolutions over the past couple of years and they're not showing up on the action sheet. Um, and I referred to a couple earlier in my report. Can somebody go through the action sheet and just, or through the um, previous minutes for the last little while and see if there's anything else outstanding please or is that too much to ask okay through the chair we can revisit the action sheets well um uh, the actions get referred to the report writers who write them and they either complete the item or leave it there so that it can be completed at a future time. We will double check on that um, for okay. Member Bainbridge. Okay, thank you. So we do have a couple of, um, oh, so we have to vote on the action sheet at the moment. That's correct. I'll put it on your screen one moment, please. Chair Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member Axe. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Member Sabritsky. Aye. Oh, member Foy. Sorry, aye. Thank you. Member Foy. She has said aye. I did my one, aye. That has carried. Thank you. Um, and there is a couple of resolutions at the bottom that uh, Malima has put down for um, us to, to vote on for a recommendation around Tangoni Reserve Lease and the Monganui Wharf proposed work. So um, We've already had those discussions um, on those two items. So, um, I would like to move the Tangoni Reserve lease. Do I have a seconder, please? Darren. Thank you. So, the voting. On screen now, Chair Gardner. Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. Member Foy. Aye. Thank you. It's carried, Madam Chair. Mungawi so Wolf. Yes, Mongolia Wolf. No. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. I have the voting on the screen if you have no longer any more discussion. Chair Gardner? 
Aye. Member Brown. Aye. Member X. Aye. Member Bainbridge. Aye. Member Stewart. Aye. Member Sabritsky. Aye. Member Foy. Aye. Thank you. Madam Chair, that's carried. Thank you. And I, I see in the chat that Shane's story, welcome Shane, a strategic plan workshop has been planned for 1pm after the next community board meeting on the 29th of March. So we're going to be very busy. It's going to be a, an all-day session by the looks by the time we have, um, is it Elizabeth there? No, no. We'll have lunch then. Yeah, we'd have to have lunch and yeah. So maybe we might be face to face, who knows? Um, there's no reason why they, why we can't be, really, mm -hmm. as John says. Yes. Now, can I just ask a question, please, because we've got the minutes here. The minutes have a number of actions in them, like the waterfront cafe and bar, um, members, uh, stuff in the chairperson's report, and they're not on the action sheet. And this is where things are falling down because we can't keep an eye on how things are getting along. And for example, major item not on the agenda, Tihiku drainage. Notes the item was not on the agenda because staff have not prepared a drainage update. Notes the report cannot be delayed because the requested workshop schedule for October, November with the committees has not eventuated asks an urgent teams meeting before Christmas takes part. Nothing happens. We talked to the CEO today. He says you should be talking to somebody senior. Oh, no, he's not there, and the other guy won't know what he's doing. So really, it's not at all good, quite the reverse. That's all. Through the chair? Yes. Regarding the drainage issue? I believe that there was a discussion held between yourself and the drainage staff members at the end of last year to resolve the matter and have the workshop early this month, or sorry, February. And those are the discussions that are going to continue with Andy Finch. Yes. Um, so because he's not there for a couple of weeks, so um, Sean has suggested that um, that he will get on to the drainage issue for us and, 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 and let us know what's happening. So um, I can have those discussions with possibly somebody in infrastructure department, IAMS. So I, we'll try our best to <coughs> set up a meeting. Madam Chair. I don't know. I mean, Madam Chair, um, just a suggestion. Could we ask the staff to potentially move over that contract instead of being part of the three waters urban three waters stuff they have with ventia to move it over to the roading contract so at least it's outside of dealing with all of these urban pipes stormwater stuff that actually has nothing to do with digging out drains which is what the roading people do all the time we've asked so, for that sort of thing before and it hasn't come up in any action too. So I think that that's a sensible really. suggestion that it's still covered under some sort of external contractor that can do the work, but not tied up in all of the stuff that seems to complicate things, because um, I don't see us making any progress. And today mm. I met with really practical people from Fulton Hogan that know how to drive a digger. Oh, talented. So I think you know, maybe some practical, sensible approach might be there as a simple solution. Could that be something brought up with the staff? Just take it away from them. They're doing a terrible job. Okay, let's have that discussion. And, and can we set, Malima, can we set up a, a Teams meeting with Felicity, Cheryl? Off Darren, Troy, and whoever else is in the department that can help us, please move this forward. Uh, Madam Chair, I will direct that request through to the CE's office where it should go, okay. and they can make that uh, arrangement. 
because it's getting so frustrating. Thank you. Um, I hope, I, I hope, I'm aware that the CS office is following this line of communication, so we, uh, that will be picked up there. I, can we stop the recording because our meeting is officially uh, finished? Well, it hasn't officially closed until you close it, and we oh, re we, re we return to discussing the action sheet after we had moved and seconded okay. and then ended it. So okay. up to you. So I'll officially close the meeting, and um, all these discussions that we're having here. like to do that please Jackie would you be happy to do that please oh she I believe her screen has frozen oh. um, and I'm sure I'm happy to offer the ending karakia if you don't mind oh thank you so much you're welcome kia inoi tato kia tau kia tato ka tō te ata whai o tō tato arikia ihu kuraiti me te aroha o te atua me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu ake 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 amene.